It looks like E3 is coming back and Overwatch 2 beta finishes its first week. All that and more, my name's Ethos and these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Coming in at number five, Team Fortress 2 has worried many fans over the year with the lack of attention and updates, and in the past, many forums online have questioned if even the game is still technically alive. However, in an attempt to save the game, of course, save TF2, the game has received another update just after a fairly recent update back in June. This new update outlined on their Steam page will automatically be applied when players boot up the game. Players can expect fixes to exploits and stability issues, as well as some new server settings. Game mode Man vs Machine has also received an update. Players can now kick spectators and will be able to correct the names and loading screen backgrounds. Another new addition is that players can join arenas late. It will no longer matter if the battle has already started. While the game is still far from perfect, these recent updates have shown an honest and real attempt to at least make things better on Valve's part. And speaking of games possibly being alive or dead, the month of June marked seven years of the MOBA Heroes of the Storm, which has faced setbacks and new content droughts since its last introduced hero, Hogger, in December of 2020. While a fair share of balance updates fleshed out the nuances of Heroes of the Storm gameplay between then and now, there haven't been any new additions. This week, however, Blizzard sidestepped addressing the lack of new content and announced there's no new plans for new for purchase content to be added, but does plan to only implement balance updates and basically going into maintenance mode until they pull the plug. And it definitely seems like a band-aid over the current situation, but players in touch with the IP will likely have seen this coming from a mile away. Competition from Dota 2 and League of Legends is incredibly fierce, and the waters of Blizzard are piping hot thanks to Lawsuit Hell. Not to mention support for the game had already been slim for some time. Even if Heroes of the Storm continues to stay online, how long will it take before Blizzard finally closes it down? And speaking of Blizzard, moving into story number three, speaking of another game that we don't know the current status of how it's gonna end up being, Overwatch 2 is still moving forward, squashing bugs and listening to player feedback and getting ready for its mid-cycle patch. The main focus this week, however, has been on Mercy and Symmetra changes and thoughts on Junker Queen. So without further ado, let's get into it a little bit. Mercy has been around since the beginning of Overwatch and she's been this guardian angel that deals out heals and resurrections to protect the team. As many will remember, she was pretty much a huge problem of balance for Blizzard, ultimately causing her to have multiple iterations throughout the life cycle of the original Overwatch. Some players recently discovered a new super jump ability that Mercy has that was helpful and completely unintentional as it was part of a bug that players used to their advantage. Now don't worry that feature isn't going anywhere necessarily, instead Overwatch 2 has made changes to Mercy to make this super jump feature more reliable and consistent. In the next patch, after seeing a few issues with the original implementation of this latest version, the ability will be changed once again to give more power and control over Guardian Angel, and also increasing its flexibility. Now on to good old Symmetra. Now Symmetra, much like Mercy, was also another original character that just wasn't really popular out of the gate, but once people realized her true potential, especially on certain maps, she became a very playable character. Now on with how Symmetra was originally introduced, it seems that it's happening once again and Symmetra is barely being played. During the first beta, Symmetra didn't really seem to fit into the faster playstyle that includes more engagements and less barriers. Currently, the team is testing out her secondary fire projectile size and increasing it quite a bit while also reducing her secondary charge time from 1.2 seconds to now back to 1 second. And finally, a substantial change is being made that would reduce her teleporter cooldown from 16 seconds to 12 seconds. But of course, outside of that, we can also talk about the brand new character that came with this latest beta update, the Junker Queen. While she has had a lot of work done and bug fixes have been made for her, she's still very early on in the testing period. In addition, tank queues have been surging due to the high number of players who've wanted to try the brand new queen. Hopefully, as players get a chance to try her out, these queue times will naturally go down. And lastly, there's some other characters that are being watched that may be nerfed in the patches to come, Zenyatta and Sojourn, just to name a few. And moving into story number two, in August, fans of Riot Games, well, games, will be spending more real-world money for in-game currency. The company announced earlier this week that it has changes to change the pricing of in-game currency for both League of Legends and Teamfight Tactics. Both RP and TFT coin will be adjusted in several regions to account for worldwide inflation, currency fluctuations, maintaining fair prices between and within regions, consistency across their products, and a associated costs increasing. While some places like Poland are reportedly seeing as much as a 20% price increase, the changes for North America and Canada, yes we know Canada is part of North America, but Riot broke it up differently, but whatever, aren't quite as bad at 1.8% and 9.9%. The company isn't just jacking up prices that much, however. It involves a bit more tinkering than that. Specifically, the company is also changing prices so that they fit the 99 cent format. For North America, instead of receiving 750 of in-game currency for $5, players will now get 575 for 499, or 1380 in-game currency will now run for 1099 instead of $10. These changes will reflect on August the 19th. 
And finally, coming at number one, your biggest story of the week. They say that you can't keep a good guy down, and in this case, you apparently can't keep an annual event hosted by a major corporation down either. So it looks like E3 is back. Interestingly, it doesn't seem like the event will be solely headed up by the ESA when it returns. According to the press release, the organization has teamed up with an event production company, ReadPop. This company is associated with other major conventions including PAX, New York Comic Con, and Star Wars Celebration. When the event returns, those running it promise titanic AAA reveals, earth-shattering world premieres, and exclusive access to the future of video games. The event will welcome back publishers, developers, journalists, content creators, manufacturers, buyers, and licensors, while highlighting digital showcases and in-game consumer components. Repop's global VP of gaming Kyle Matterson Kish will be leading up the new E3 team. He has addressed the company's approach for bringing the convention back, stating that they've been listening to and have heard and studied the global gaming community's feedback, and that, as a result, will be a return to form that honors what has always worked, while reshaping what didn't work and setting a new benchmark for what video game expos in 2023 and beyond should be. Apparently, one of the first areas they're reworking is how press registration works. This process is intended to be streamlined, with the process starting later this year. And that moves us to the question of the week. With E3 being announced as coming back, let me know in the comment section below, does that get you excited to go back to E3? Or would you rather sit out due to the pandemic still being a thing or just how overcrowded it was in the previous couple of years before the pandemic? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name's Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.